Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on Flask. So Flask is a lightweight framework written in Python for developing web applications. And you can actually develop fairly sophisticated um, web apps in Flask. The base framework is pretty minimal. It, it gives you some basic functionality for interacting or kind of writing a web server. Um, but a lot of uh, additional features can be added to your application by using Flask extensions and, and other Python libraries where necessary. Before we get into how this, uh, how to actually write a Flask application, we probably need to take a moment and talk a little bit about how the, the web works. So the application that we're going to be working on is going to be a web-based um, application and uh, that would be this blue box over here, the server. So this is what we're going to implement in Flask. It's going to be a server that sits and waits for connections from clients, which is the green box. So, you know, think about your web browser when you might um, go to google.com or amazon.com. Your your web browser is the client or the, the app on your phone, let's say, is the client making a connection to through the internet to the servers at Google or um, Amazon in the case of the two examples. So I've just chosen what is probably a fake URL, a fake domain name, someserver.com uh, for this lovely blue box server. Um, the, the web works in a client server model and a request response model. So if you're familiar with um, um, sort of internet technologies, you probably have heard of HTTP or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Um, and if nothing else, you've seen it at the beginning of URLs uh, in your web browser. So the way it works is a client will s launch a request to a server. And uh, for instance, I'm saying client's going to make a request to get customers. Get is very important. Get is considered an HTTP verb. And there's a, a handful of them four or five that, that we might look at over the course of this tutorial. We'll definitely look at two, get and post. But basically, um, when the request is made to the server, that request is made with a particular verb, so in this case, get, and then a particular resource. Um, and this kind of falls into the model of REST APIs. Um, and you can Google REST APIs, but basically it's a architectural pattern for constructing um, a, a, a sort of a server system. Um, so anyhow, so we're going to make a request to the server for get customers, and the server is going to take that request, the information that's part of the request, and do whatever it's going to do with it. Maybe it's going to hit a database. Maybe it's going to retrieve some pictures. Maybe it's going to do whatever. And then it's going to package a collection of additional information up and send it as a response to back to the client. So if this is Google, when you go to google.com, uh, the servers are going to package up the homepage for Google, which is pretty minimal, and send that back to your web browser or your phone or, or wherever, okay? Um, so this, so the, the big takeaway here is that this system operates on a request response cycle. So a request is made from the client to the server. This is where we're going to implement some code, and that code is going to package up responses and send them back to the client. So in terms of prerequisites in order to follow along, um, you need a Python installation. Um, I like the Anaconda installation of Python, the Anaconda distribution, I should say. Um, anything over 3.7 is probably fine. Um, you need Flask, obviously, because this is going to be a Flask tutorial. Um, if you're not familiar with installing different frameworks or libraries in your particular Python installation, um, I encourage you to channel your inner Googler and check out uh, for your particular installation um, how you would install Flask. But it is probably the case that if you open up a terminal or a command prompt, um, and if you have an Anaconda on Windows, you can open up an Anaconda prompt and um, just simply type pip install flask. That's going to uh, install the, the flask framework in your Python installation. Um, if at a later point, as we're getting through the tutorial, 
something doesn't seem to be working, it might be that you're, um, you have a few different versions of Python installed, and so you'll need to kind of navigate which one uh, you installed Flask in, and then I'll show you how in VS Code at least to set that up. Um, you'll need some way to write code. Uh, VS Code, um, you could probably use PyCharm. Uh, if you um, are more of a command line person, maybe you're using VI or Vim or Emacs, but something that uh, allows you to write code, syntax highlighting is probably gonna be helpful, obviously not necessary. If you're on Windows, Notepad++ might be an option. Um, there's, there's tons of options, but uh, you'll need something to write code. Okay, so I'm in VS Code now, and what I've done so far is created a folder somewhere on my computer in my home, my home directory called Flask Sample, which you can see um, I have opened in VS Code. I've opened the folder, not a file. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to create a new file, and uh, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna call that file app.py. And so now I've, kind of got a place where I can type some code. First thing um, you're gonna wanna check is to make sure that if you're using VS Code that it's using the right Python environment. So whichever environment you installed Flask in, um, if you installed it in Anaconda Python, when you opened the prompt, you would probably have seen um, base or something in parentheses. Um, another way to check is to look at the version of Python by typing at your command prompt, Python space dash dash version. And uh, you can kind of sometimes match based on the uh, version of Python. So if I click right here, um, see I have a whole bunch of different Python environments, but the one that I have Flask installed in is this particular one called web dev. It's very possible you may only have base and if that's what you got, then that's great. That's probably, um, the easiest way to know where you installed Flask. Uh, so that's just something to check. If things don't look like they're um, being recognized in VS Code, then you might just need to check your Python interpreter. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import Flask. So from Flask, import Flask, okay? Um, so this, uh, if you get any weird squigglies or any weird errors or whatnot, that may mean that you don't have the right version of Python selected. So you'd need to update that. Okay, so once I have Flask uh, imported, then I'm gonna go ahead and create the Flask app. So app equals Flask name, close parentheses. Okay, so what this is doing is it's creating an instance of uh, the Flask class, a Flask object, and it's um, providing as the base name the the name of this module, all right? So then I'm gonna go down um, and we're gonna add some stuff in between, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the code that will allow, or add the code that will allow this file to run as a, as a um, kind of its own thing. So if name equals uh, main, then I'm going to want to run the application. So app.run. Now I wanna turn debugging on for the Flask application. So debug equals true. Um, and I'm gonna to wanna to set the port equal to, the default port is 5,000, but I'll set it equal to 4,000 so that you can see what that looks like um, in a second. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so we have our Flask app. We have our code that will allow this, this file to run independently. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add a basic route to the application. So the way I do that is I'm gonna type app.route um, and I'm going to give it the route that I want it to go to or I want it to be bound to. So what this means is um, whenever in my browser I go to whatever the proper URL is or the, sorry, the domain uh, colon 4000 slash, this is the function that's going to be executed. So I'll say, uh, now I wanna define a function in Python. So I'm gonna say def, uh, I'll just call it base route. Doesn't take any parameters. And I'll just return a simple string that's got big characters of 
this is the base route. Okay, so again, uh, this particular line of code is called a Python decorator, um, and it does some some stuff that's beyond the scope of this video. But this line and this function definition go together to sort of bound the route um, that ends with a slash to this particular function. So, so basically, this means that in your browser, for now, if you go to once we once we make it run, you'll end up going to 127.0.0.1 colon 4000. And that's because this is set to 4000. Um, and then just slash. So kind of, you know, google.com-esque enter. So um, then the, the Flask server will recognize that particular route. It will come here and it will execute this function. Um, okay, so we have this base route written. It's kind of the most basic Flask application that we can start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And um, then I'm going to just, since I have the right web development environment, uh, I'm sorry, the right, the right Python environment uh, selected, I'm gonna go ahead and run it using the go button. Oops, sorry, I have this running somewhere else. Um, let me stop that, okay, so pretend that didn't happen. I'm going to hit go again. And then you'll see some information. It's serving the Flask app. Debug mode is on. Now, debug mode being on is because of this parameter right here to the function. That's important because once that's on, first of all, you're going to get some debugging output. It'll help you, you know, obviously debug your project. But it will also um, do some um, what they call hot reloading. So as I edit the code, I don't have to stop the server and start the server again, okay? Um, and you can kind of ignore this stuff for now. But it's running on 127.001 colon 4000. Now, if you're not familiar, 127.001, so this IP address right here is a special IP address that allows um, your computer to basically talk to itself. It's called the loopback. Um, sometimes it will be referred to as localhost, um, and so it's it's the way that from from an application on your computer you can basically communicate to some other application over the network, um, and it's four thousand because we put for port four thousand here. Had I used a different port, so I don't know forty forty, then um, this would say forty forty, and that's what I need to go to in the browser. So I'm going to open. Uh, Chrome real quick, and I'm going to go to 127.0.0.1 colon 4000, and then I see the string that I created, or that I returned from that function. Now, um, if you're if this is weird, it's okay, it's just some basic HTML so that the text is bigger and it's easier to see. Um, you don't need to be an HTML ninja or anything. So this is just a base route, again, Whenever I go to in the browser to um, you know just the slash, meaning I'm not providing any additional information besides the base URL. So if I were to go to uh, I don't know documents, I'm going to get an error because there's nothing in the Python application that's running in my application to know what to do if the route right here were to end with documents, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and add another route that actually has um, something besides the slash. So we can say app, at app.route, and I'm gonna call it, I don't know, let's see, hello world, seems appropriate. Then I'm going to define a new function, I'll call it hello world. Uh, and I'm, this time I'm going to return uh, hello world, nothing fancy. Um, H1, hello world. And there you go. Okay. So I want you to notice that whenever I saved the file, that there was some additional output that popped up down here. Okay. Um, 
what this is is uh, the hot reloading that I was talking about. So as I'm editing the code, it's reloading. It's it's like monitoring the files. In this case, there's only one, but it's monitoring the files for changes and reloading them. So I just remove that one space. Again, I got a reload. Um, okay, so uh, if I go back to my browser, if I go to documents, that's still not going to work. If I go to just forward slash, we're at the original route that we wrote, we wrote. And then if I go to hello world, I'll get the hello world route. Okay. So, so now we have two routes. Um, and I'll just make a little comment like I did above. So this would be 127.0.0.1 colon 4,000 slash hello world. Okay. Um, now let's say you wanted to have a route in your application that, uh, allowed you to have, um, like a variable piece of information. So like, hello world, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Or hello world. And I put my name Mark. Okay. Um, so I'll do Mark for now. That'll be a good example, but it's not going to do anything. It's going to say URL doesn't know what to do with it because we don't have that route implemented in our project yet. So I'm going to come back here and we're going to write a route that um, accepts a parameter. So at app.route forward slash hello world. But then I'm going to put another slash and in angle brackets, I'm going to put first name. Okay. So what the angle brackets do is indicate that um, the, the server, the server that we're writing, the, this application we're writing, should expect there to be something after hello world, but that it's going to be a variable. It's going to vary, okay? So now I'm gonna write a function, define hello world with name, and then the parameter, so first name is gonna be a parameter to the function, so first, name. And here I'm going to return. Uh, now I'm going to use an F string, a formatted string. So I'm just going to put an F in front of it. Um, hello there. And then in curly braces, I'm going to put the name of first name uh, of the variable that's being passed to the function. Uh, put a little exclamation point. Um, oh, let me add in the H1. So I'll say h1 and at the end i'll add h1 also oops slash h1 so now i have a string okay so save it notice it reloaded so let's go back to our browser and see did we get some something good all right so let me get there all right so we have our base route so that's great can we still go to hello world 